Here we can see the Pilgrim's Pride Feed Mill in Athens, Georgia, the site of where G315 terminates. G315 is a loaded grain normally from Evansville, Indiana to Athens, Georgia, at least the first part of the train. See, G315 comes up as one whole unit grain train. Half of the train gets put in the Athens Pilgrim's Pride Feed Mill, and the other half goes up the Gainesville Midland Subdivision to the Pilgrim's Pride Feed Mill in Gainesville. Now we go down the tracks, past the south end of Fowler Signal, up towards Fowler Junction. Fowler Junction is where the CSX Gainesville Midland Subdivision meets the CSX Abbeville Subdivision. The two tracks on the left are for the Abbeville, and the two on the right are for the Gainesville Midland. Here we can see the Fowler Junction Yard, where L828 drops cars as well as L822 and G315 puts their train in the siding to run around. Once they shove the Athens portion of their train into the Pilgrim's Ride feed mill, they take this turn up the Gainesville of the subdivision with a new crew. Our journey here takes us to the crossing just outside of the Athens Country Club. Here we can see where they will depart Fowler Junction Yard northbound. You can see them here pulling past the cut that LA-22 left on the siding last night. For chasing a northbound, here at Trinity Place is the best place to start, because you're right here by the end of Fowler Junction, so you can know when the train departs. G908 would come to a stop here and allow the Halcon crew van to get the conductor back to the head end. Then, we'll follow the head end up Old Jefferson Road. Now, just about a mile up the road, I'm shooting at the Petro Express gas station as G908 in the foreground passes the silos in the background, which are no longer served by rail. Right now, G908 is going through the Oak Grove Road crossing, about half a mile down from my location, at the Pico Lane crossing. The Pico Lane crossing is a very short crossing, with the turn lane being able to be used to pull over and shoot this location. The key to chasing the southern half of the Gainesville Midland subdivision is to stay on this road the whole time and stay on the side where the road is. Don't cross the tracks, otherwise, you won't be able to catch up to this thing for at least a mile, if not two. G908 
yet another of these long hill shots. G908 crosses the pub crossing just about half a mile back from our location at Archer Grove School Road. Then it would come down a hill around a curve and through the trees which makes for a pretty nice view. I was parked on the north end of the crossing so I could shoot the crossing and the trees in the background. Not my favorite location from the chase, but I was able to get the whole train in the shot at the end, just north of this private crossing, which is south of Clarksboro, Georgia. If you're a fan of large sweeping curves, as you can tell, the Gainesville Midland is great for you. Yet another one coming up to the new Kings Bridge Road crossing. The train comes into view about four tenths of a mile down, and you can watch as it makes its way along the elongated S-curve down Jefferson Road towards the location. After shooting only the head end at New Kingsbridge Road, we go a mile down the road and you can see G908 hit two back-to-back -back crossings as they come up the hill and then back down again to Burley Place.
Now, reaching downtown Arcade, Georgia, this shot is really a take it or leave it with a lot of signs in the foreground. G908 comes around the bend and up the grade, and once again, it'll be a head-in only shot so that you can reach the next crossing about a mile and a half down. Athens Street Crossing is not a bad view. Unfortunately, it is better for southbounds, and I have not been able to capture one at this location yet. Now, on the north side of Jefferson, we're at Holder Siding Road, where I didn't have much time to get out and grab this shot. At Long Farm Road, you can't cross to the other side because the train will slow down and stop at the Pendergrass Yard just up the road. A quick disclaimer, G908 will not always stop at the Pendergrass Yard. If they have two units, they usually will pick up a third to tackle the steeper grades north of the yard. But if they already have three units, they usually will just continue on. Unfortunately this day, the CSX 907 was having issues with the AC, so they decided to put 972 on the head end to lead the train north from here on out. Here you can see the conductor taking the necessary steps to disconnect CSX 972 from the locomotive behind it. Nine seventy two is now on the head end and I didn't respect just as a common courtesy. A lot of these crews are friendly as long as you don't go up right in their face waving camera around at them while they're trying to do their job, which includes filming them on the ground just as a sign of respect to let them do their thing. It usually takes anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour for G908 to do their engine swap, new brake test, and to hit the road. Once they start pulling from here, you need to immediately get north to Pendergrass to be able to catch up and stay ahead, as the interstate exit traffic will slow you down. Here we are at the Pendergrass Civic Center in downtown Pendergrass, which is on the north end of a really long and steep grade. And as you can see, there's a low overhanging branch right out by the tracks, which surprisingly G908 didn't hit.
And what bell screams rural Georgia like a tractor on the main road and a great train going by? We now follow Old Gainesville Road, which turns into Main Street, which brings us to Talmont. Following the common theme in the Gainesville Midland, this train can be seen at about half a mile down the road, going down and then up the grade out of Talmo. And definitely one of the better shots on the Midland, right here in Belmont, as this train comes around the sweeping curve just south of the quarry. With this train absolutely creeping, we knew we had a good chance to beat it to the quarry access road, which we did. Here you can see the tail end of that train off in the distance as the head end creeps up around the corner. This shot does have potential if you set it up right and plan it, which I didn't. I think driving by Baker Road, you'll have a better shot there than here, but this is what we got. Again, poor planning on my part. That's all I was able to get of it coming up the grade, but here we are at the full minor road.
some of you may be wondering, what's the X under the W stand for? And that just means that there is multiple crossings that apply for this whistle post. Here at the West Ridge Road Crossing, G908 pulls up and into the siding to run around the train. Usually it takes them roughly 45 minutes to an hour to complete the runaround process, and once they run around their train, they will shove back into the Craven Fried Feed Mill in Gainesville. Here the conductor will get off, line the switch for the siding, and then the engines will roll by and the conductor will realign the switch back to the main. Here they'll connect to the tail end of their train and shove up to the mill. While waiting for G908 to shove to the mill, we went to the Gainesville Amtrak station. Here you can see the power for an NS grain train, which serves Cargill, parked on one of the side tracks. While a certain somebody was blabbering and telling tales, the Gainesville Crossings, which are notorious for gate malfunctions, decided to go down for no apparent reason. Now, the power that was tied down is officially a crew train running under the symbol 45R. Here you can see them backing towards the mill to go ahead and put their train together. 
the opposite of what Gene I know it is about to do. And as we were filming G908 reversing, yet another Gainesville crossing malfunction. Passing the cargo power, 45R finally backs fully into the mill. And also, on very similar timing, G908 also fully backs into the mill, at least with their one gut. They still have a few more to make. And after G908 had backed into the mill, NS-153, a southbound manifest headed towards Irondale, Alabama, would come around the corner. There was two things to look out for on this 153. The first being the leader, an NS AC44 T6M, had a K5 LLA, which isn't standard on these units. The second is that NS1071 was mid DPU. With the tail of 153 gone, NS45R decides to peek out of the mill, which they didn't have to wait, but it made for some good timing. Here comes NS242, Atlanta, Georgia to Charleston, South Carolina. Usually has mixed freight, auto racks, and intermodal on this train.
A neat little scene from Marler Street in Gainesville with an old brick factory in the background as G908 shoves her train in the foreground. Forty-five hours is finally long enough that building their train takes them over the Bradford Street extension crossing. Here you can see CSX going by the Pilgrim for Bride feed next time, in the middle that they serve in Gainesville. And just behind it, you can see the Cargill silos in the background, which are served by NS, who is also currently building a train out of Cargill. Coming south, this is an NS local returning back to Gainesville. Here comes G908 with the conductor riding the tail end of the last cut, which they'll separate into a few smaller sections to put on the tracks at the mill. Interesting vantage point, you get a little double action as CSX backs into the mill while NS45R in the background pulls out of their mill. Really a unique kind of sight, you really don't see that a lot with two railroads running that close to each other, especially running at the same time. With CSX still finishing putting the train away, Pilgrim's Bride wasted absolutely no time getting to work. 
already firing up their track mobile, getting ready to pull this cut through and unload. A nice K5LA on 581 as they pull away from the train. <laughs> Here's that same local power from earlier headed back north. Finally done with their train, G908's power heads back to the siding where we saw them run around the train, and that's where they'll tie down the power. I had never seen a track mobile work before, and if you look closely, you can see the rail wheels being pulled up and off as the rubber wheels made for driving on the road take over and direct the track mobile closer to the cars. With the chase being planned for the next day as well, I wasn't going to spend any more time watching Pilgrim's Pride put away this grain train. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned for the next video.